Time for social distance baseball season to kick off with no fans. So <laughs> this will be weird and interesting, won't it? So um, we thought that uh, we would do a little tribute to the kicking off of baseball and uh, have take me out to the ball game uh, in the background while I try to wax poetic and read Casey at the Bat, which uh, you guys know that poem. It's just pretty great. Um, so I hope you enjoy this and sort of imagine you're eating a social distance hot dog. Okay, here we go. <laughs> The outlook wasn't brilliant for the Mudville Nine that day. The score stood four to two, with but one inning more to play. And then with Cooney died at first, and Barrows did the same, a sickly silence fell upon the patrons of the game. A straggling few got up to go in deep despair. The rest clung to that hope which springs eternal in the human breast. They thought, if only Casey could but get a whack at that, we'd put up even money now with Casey at the bat. But Flynn preceded Casey, also did, and did also Jimmy Blake. And the former was a Lulu, and the latter was a cake. And upon that stricken multitude, grim melancholy sat. For there seemed but little chance of Casey's getting to the bat. But Flynn let drive a single. And to the wonderment of all, and then Blake, the much despised, tore the cover off the ball. <laughs> and when the dust had lifted and the men saw what had occurred, there was Johnny safe at second and Flynn a hugging third. <laughs> and then from 5,000 throats and more, there rose a lusty yell. It rumbled through the valley, it rattled through the dell, it knocked upon the mountain and recoiled upon the flat. For Casey, mighty Casey, was advancing to the bat. There was an ease in Casey's manner as he stepped up to his place. There was a pride in Casey's bearing and a smile on Casey's face. And when, responding to the cheers, he lightly doffed his hat, no stranger in the crowd could doubt t'was Casey at the bat. Ten thousand eyes were on him as he rubbed his hands in the dirt. Five thousand tongues applauded when he wiped them on his shirt. And then, while the writhing pitcher ground the ball into his hip, Defiance flashed in Casey's eyes, a sneer curled Casey's lip. And now, the leather-covered sphere came hurling through the air, and Casey stood a-watching it in haughty grandeur there. Close by the sturdy Batman, the ball unheeded sped. Oh, that ain't my style, said Casey. Strike one, the Empire said. From the benches black with people, there went up a muffled roar, like the beating of a storm waves on a stern and distant shore. Kill him! Kill the umpire! shouted someone in the stand, and it's likely they would have killed him had not Casey raised his hand. And with a smile of Christian charity, great Casey's visage shone. He stilled the rising tumult, he bade the game go on. He signaled to the pitcher, and once more the spheroid flew. But Casey still ignored it, and the umpire said, Strike two! Fraud! cried the maddening thousands, and Echo answered, Fraud! But one scornful look from Casey, and the audience was awed. They saw his face grow stern and cold. They saw his muscles strain, and they knew that Casey wouldn't let that ball go by again. The sneer was gone from Casey's lip. His teeth are clenched in hate. He pounds with cruel violence his bat upon the plate. And now the pitcher holds the ball, and now he lets it go. And now the air is shattered by the force of Casey's blow. Oh, somewhere in this favored land, the sun is shining bright. The band is playing somewhere, and somewhere hearts are light. And somewhere men are laughing, 
and somewhere children shout, but there's no joy in Mudville. Mighty Casey has struck out. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Play ball. Thank you for coming. I'll see you next week.